Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the new Hulk Build-A-Figure Wave War Machine. Marvel's War Machine, to be more specific. This is kind of based on the Endgame model. Uh, we don't see this suit a whole lot in the movie, but it is kind of in there. This one is not exactly accurate, but again, we have to give some leeway for accuracy when figures release any time near the movie's release date because obviously they're working on concept art and that sort of thing. So there's always some leniency in that regard. But this is something that some people really like and some people seem to think it looks too kiddish because of the big feet and kind of weird proportions. It looks like a, a Buzz Lightyear type of figure. And yeah, both people are kind of true. It really comes down to personal preference, I guess. It's not um, inherently bad or good. It's just kind of depends on what you like. So. Uh, let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 17 and a half centimeters, which makes him pretty close to seven inches, right around there. And so he does have a little bit of size to him. And as you can see, this is probably the least human shaped war machine figure there is. So that's why it's kind of polarizing for some people. I'm personally still a huge fan of the original war machine, not the, not the repainted Mark II, but the the actual War Machine from like Iron Man 2. Uh, very, very much a fan of that. This one's cool enough in its own right though. Not in my, my personal cup of tea, but I can definitely appreciate it for what it is. And it is kind of well done and kind of not. It's it's one of those figures where it depends what you're going for. Aesthetically, it's, it's pretty good. They did a decent job with the sculpt. It's fairly sharp and and clean and doesn't look muddy or anything like that, so that's good. The paint job's pretty clean, though it is a little bit lacking. I think we have a whole lot of just dark gray gunmetal plastic. And then there's some silver, which is nicely done, and the red spots are few and far between, but they are there, so I'll give it a little bit of credit. They did do a good job with the logo up here on the shoulder and the numbering on the chest, that's pretty nice. Uh, the back is mostly devoid of all detail. There's not a whole lot going on there. Uh, but really the important part, the most important part, I would say, is the head and it looks pretty good i think they did a pretty clean job with that the silver's in place the red's in place the white's in place i like that that's that's pretty nice that is well done that is a good paint job so ultimately it's not anywhere near as impressive as some figures have been but it's not really a problem i'd say it's, it's pretty good aesthetically speaking so we'll give this one we'll give it an eight out of ten i think I think they did a pretty good job and they definitely have a little bit of room to kind of ramp it up but it's not necessary so that's okay now as far as accessories go we have just three we have the two arm mounted guns which are really just black plastic that doesn't look very good and then we do have the shoulder mounted gun which is just black plastic with a little bit of red on it and it looks only okay these are not the best designed in in the general sense just because they're so lackluster and uh, that doesn't translate well to just solid blackish plastic so kind of a bummer accessory wise we don't have any blast effects we don't have anything at all really so yeah uh six out of ten it's there but it's not not impressive in any in any real way all right so this top gun does connect on a ball peg however it's just a swivel. I mean, you can't really use that ball peg, so just a swivel there. And these guys technically mount on a swivel as well, but that wouldn't do any good. You want to have them straight with the arms. So that, as far as articulation goes, we're just going to set those aside. So now as far as the real articulation goes, the head is on your standard hinge and ball peg. However, you really don't have much room to do anything with it because it sits right down in there inside that kind of shroud-like neck plate. So you're going to get to move it enough Side to side's pretty good, but up and down, yeah, not so much. You're not really getting anything out of it. So it's minimal, but within reason, so I think that's fine. I think the side to side is actually kind of impressive, so I'm okay with that. These shoulder pads are separate and soft, and they are connected to the shoulder, so when you raise the arm, they just do that, which does make them kind of scrunch up, but, you know, it, it could be a lot worse than that, so that's, that's okay. We don't get full horizontal range, though. Full rotation is not a problem. We do get a bicep swivel at the top of the bicep, like standard. And then we do also get a rotation at the bicep itself, or at the elbow, I'm sorry, at the elbow itself, which is just a single joint. And you can tuck it in a little bit to get about 90 degrees, but that is it. So not the most range in the world, but you do get another rotation there. The wrist is a swivel and a hinge. No paint on the sculpted repulsor in the hand though. I don't know that he ever used repulsors like that in the movie. I kind of doubt it. He hasn't really used them much outside of the uh, whiplash fight, so who knows. 
uh, and I guess the fight with Iron Man himself. Anyway, this side is the same, except we have a fist hand right here with the same articulation. For the torso, we have what feels like just a single ball peg. It leans back almost not at all. It leans forward almost not at all. Side to side, yeah, that's better, but not particularly impressive. And then as far as the rotation goes, it's fine. So we basically just have a swivel with a little bit of a wiggle, and that's very minimal. For the hips, they do go pretty far forward. That's not too bad at all, almost horizontal. Don't kick out to the side too far. They don't go back, and they go out to the side at about 45 degrees, give or take. So that's pretty good. Thigh swivel is fine. Double jointed knee does work nicely. You get pretty decent range out of that. However, the knee joint is kinda, kinda janky. There's no meat in there at all. And if they're gonna have things tuck in like that, they could have at least added a little bit of extra meat because when you bend the knee, it looks like there's nothing there. Like there's definitely no way a human could be inside that. So that's not a great situation. I don't think we have any moving flaps back here. They're just glued on pieces as far as I can tell. If anything's supposed to move, I haven't been able to get it to move. But uh, it does look nice having these extra flaps here. So that's kind of cool. And then for the ankle, it's your standard Marvel Legends ankle. Almost no range forward though. Minimal range back. And you do get an ankle rocker. And it's okay. But yeah, it's ultimately not all that articulated in the ankle. So final verdict on the articulation on this guy. It is minimal, but probably suitable for War Machine well enough. So it's not like I'm going to totally tear it apart for it, but it definitely could be a lot better. We're going to go with just 6 out of 10. Torso has no reason to not have more range. Uh, the ankles, they could have easily had more range. The knees are ugly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not terrible, but it definitely could be a lot better. So time for the final verdict on this guy. It's not really bad enough in any one way to be a real problem, so I think it's just gonna boil down to what you like. If you like the way this looks, then I think you're gonna be okay with the figure. If you're not a huge fan of the way this looks, then it's not gonna win you over. It doesn't do anything well enough to convert anybody to liking it if you don't already. Uh, really the best thing about this figure is the head. It's really nicely done. The rest is all just pretty average. Nothing great, nothing too terrible, so yeah, I think I'm gonna give it a final verdict of seven out of 10. It is in the mediocre field of better than bad. I guess that's a, that's a very clear way of describing it. A five would mean that it's not good or bad. This figure is not bad, but it's not super good, so therefore seven. That's how I think, and that's, I think, what you guys are probably gonna find if you buy the figure. So, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up, and if you did not enjoy the video, well, go ahead and give it a thumbs down, because YouTube values interaction more than positive ratings. Don't know why, but that's the way it is, so dislike all you want. I don't care. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to do it, because I do have thousands of videos already on the channel, and I have new ones coming out just about every single day. So make sure you come back for all of that good stuff, and in the meantime, keep collecting.